Right, we are dealing with the knowledge area chemical change. Let's look at concentration of solutions. Right. So the behavior of solutions depend not only on the nature of the solutes but also on their concentrations. Right. So sometimes if the concentration of the solution uh, is increased, we find that the rate of the reaction may be faster. Or if the concentration is decreased, the rate of the reaction may be slower. So at this stage, you don't know what rate of the reaction is. Rate of the reaction is what you're going to be doing in grade 12. Uh, so the greater the amount of solute dissolved in a given quantity of solvent, then the solution has a greater concentration. Okay. In chemistry, when we express concentration, we express it quantitatively, right? So uh, we need to know what concentration is defined as. So the most widely way to quantify concentration is we use the, uh, the term molarity, right? So concentration can be given in terms of molarity. Concentration can also be given in terms of mole fractions, which we don't, we're not worried about. I'm just giving you an indication that we can measure it differently or PPM is parts per million, or molality is moles per kilogram of solvent. But we're going to define it in terms of molarity. Uh, so if we look at this, in terms of molarity, right, concentration of a solution is the amount, right, of solute, in a given decimeter cubed of solution. That's important, right? Not in a given uh, volume of liquid, but in a given volume of solution. So here we have, right, molarity or concentration is equal to the amount of solute, which is in moles, over volume of solution. As you can see, I've highlighted it there. And we can also look at this and say, okay, concentration, uh, which could be uh, in terms of molality, which is it's, it's, it's in terms of molality, right? It could be given in terms of molality or mole fractions, but we're defining it in terms of molality. And C is equal to, concentration is equal to N, uh, uh, and N we know is moles upon volume, and the V there is volume of solution, right? So C stands for concentration, N stands for uh, amount of substance, and V is the volume of solution. What are the units? The units of concentration, uh, we know the unit of, of uh, mo uh, uh, of amount of substance is mole, and the unit of volume is uh, decimeter cube. But we also need to know that one decimeter cube is equal to one liter, right? Also, we have uh, one centimeter cubed. Okay is equal to one milliliter, right? These conversions are important because sometimes uh, instead of giving uh, volumes in cubic centimeters, they may give it in uh, milliliters. Right, so we got a uh, unit of concentration, which is mole per decimeter cube, but sometimes we use the notation M, and M uh, is equal to one mole per decimeter cube. Now we have N, so here we have C is equal to N upon V, but N is therefore equal to C times V. 
And we also know that n is equal to mass over molar mass. Right, so if we look and we want to find out what is m, right, <coughs> then we know that n, right, m, <coughs> m is equal to, right, <coughs> Uh, M is equal to N times capital M, right? But we know N here is equal to C times V. So if N is equal to C times V, so if N is equal to C times V, therefore M and we substitute for that which for n which is c times v times molar mass that is m and i've just shown you how we got that okay and once we've got that it's easy to know that from here we can get therefore c is equal to mass upon molar mass time uh, divided by uh, uh, divided by molar mass and divided by the volume of solution. So you can see in this uh, here, so if we have C is equal to N upon V, which tells you N is the moles of solute and V is volume of solution. So what do we have here? C is directly proportional to amount of substance if V is constant. V is constant. Right, if V is constant. <coughs> so C is directly proportional to N. Uh, which makes sense, the more solute I put per unit volume, that means the more concentrated the solution is. Alternatively, C is directly proportional to 1 upon the volume, right? If, if N, the moles is constant, if N is constant, okay? So it's directly proportional to 1 upon V or uh, we could say C is inversely proportional to V. As the volume of the solution increases, the concentration decreases. Right, so there you have it. But now let's look. Uh, we have that. Let's look at a, a, a demonstration. <clears throat> right. Here I have uh, this year. Uh, in year I have uh, uh, liquid. Right. I could uh, take this liquid. I can drain it off. Right. I could fill it up, and I can drain it off if I want to. Have a look at that. That one I add more. Right? This one I can remove the water. Here, uh, if you look at uh, the evaporation button, uh, you'll see I can even uh, remove the uh, amount of water. Right? And here we have a concentration uh, a meter which measures the concentration for us. Right? And so, if we look at this here now, let's say, for instance, we now say I want to put in your copper sulfate, right? I put in copper sulfate and I add, what, uh, I add the copper sulfate. What happens? Uh, let's read the concentration. The concentration is 0.31 moles per liter, or it could be 0.312, sorry, uh, 0.312 moles per decimeter cube right so you can see uh, that is a concentration of this copper sulfate solution if i decide to put more solute in it and take note of the uh, the concentration what happens to it there i added more and as i added more what happened to the concentration it's 0 0.602 moles per liter right so uh, 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 we see that the 
concentration of copper sulfate increases. If I do that again, there we see the concentration has increased. Right. But now, let's say for instance, uh, we have that, let's uh, maybe take a different one uh, and let's just say for instance we want to use uh, potassium permanganate, right? And we're starting off with uh, 500 cubic centimeters of water or let's say half a liter of water, right? See, what is the concentration? There's no, no solute there, so your meter re uh, records uh, that there's, uh, the concentration of the solution is uh, zero, right? Now, if I add uh, KMnO4, see KMnO4, what has happened? I've added and the concentration changed to 0 0.100 moles per liter or, zero, uh, or moles per decimeter cubed. If I add more, there you have it, right? The concentration is increasing. I'm keeping the, the, the uh, volume constant, right? Uh, and if we have that, so let's say for instance, I take another one just to demonstrate this. Uh, I do that, take another sample. I could have maybe uh, uh, potassium chromate, I have potassium chromate, again I have this. I could if for for our purposes increase the water there, right? And I do that and we say okay, yeah, what's happening to my concentration? Uh, there again, what's, my concentration is increasing. Now uh, surely I said we need uh, the uh, a volume of the solution, not the volume of the liquid. So if I have the volume uh, here um, already specified, then if I add the solute, what's going to be happening is that the volume of the solution increases. So I need to know what volume I require and dissolve the solute in that volume and then bring it to the volume that is required. So I I have a lesser volume of the liquid and then dissolve the solute and then bring it to the required volume. Let's assume uh, each of the markings on this, uh, 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 in this container is each counts a uh, uh, 100 cubic centimeters, right? So currently now it's standing at uh, 600 cubic centimeters and if I wanted a volume of of um, say maybe 700 centi uh, cubic centimeters, I could bring it to the, uh, to the volume of the solution. And then I know how much of the solute I have dissolved in it. Right, so, and what did you see? As I diluted that, what happened to my concentration? My concentration decreased. Let me dilute it further. Let's see what happens. Oh, there, right? As I add more water, in the same amount of solute, I find that my concentration um, decreases, right? Let's look at the other way. What happens if I evaporate the, the, the solvent? So if I evaporate the solvent, so I'm going to evaporate it and see what happens to the concentration, right? Then you know the water is being less, and you know C is equal to N upon V. V is getting smaller. What's going to happen to my concentration? Check your meter there. So I'm t t trying to decrease that. See what happens to my concentration. Concentration decreases uh, if uh, water evaporates. Right, so that is why it's important. I mean, sometimes you prepare something and if water evaporates, you find that this concentration can decrease. And if we are involved in very accurate measurements, we need to take precautions that none of the water evaporates. <coughs> right, so that gives us that uh, indication that if we dilute it, we find that uh, uh, <coughs> the concentration decreases. But now let's look at <coughs> something else. So here we have uh, the concentration of this particular 
let's let's just bring it up to a point here so we know is five six seven hundred cubic centimeters and the concentration of this particular uh, potassium chromate solution is 0 0.173 moles per decimeter cube right now if for instance if I now uh, take out a certain let's say for instance I have a beaker and I uh, take out uh, 200 cubic centimeters here and see what's happening to my concentration meter nothing right so it's still 0.7 uh, uh, it's still 0 0.173 moles per liter so I took out 200 and uh, in uh, in a beaker so let's say and then I take out uh, maybe in another beaker maybe uh, another hundred and what's the concentration uh, is still uh, would be uh, 0 0.173, right? So now we have that, <coughs> and uh, as you can see, if I again increase this, right there, you can see the uh, the concentration increases, right? So let me just show you what happens if I continue increasing while this is not directly relevant but I'll show you if I continue increasing uh, you can see the concentration goes up right the concentration goes up and it goes up more can dissolve in this solution and I'm adding more and more and more Huh? And as you can see at the bottom, it says saturated. Once it's saturated, it means none of the particles can now uh, dissolve in it. Right? It's saturated. So even if I add more and more to the solution, nothing gets dissolved. The concentration remains the same. And at the bottom, you can see a whole lot of these uh, particles settled out so they're not dissolving anymore they just give you an indication that uh, uh, it, it uh, the, the solution is saturated right each of these uh, substances when they dissolve in uh, w water they uh, become saturated and uh, so that gives you that particular indication there right <coughs> Right, now, let's look at this question here. <clears throat> look, at, uh, look at example one, okay? Here, I've got copper sulfate solution, <clears throat> and the volume I have is 500 cubic centimeters. As you can see, the concentration that's read by this meter, it says is 0 0.200 moles per liter, right? So we know what's the volume of the solution. Now it says determine the mass, okay? Determine the mass of copper sulfate that must be dissolved to make uh, this 500 cubic centimeter solution, right? That's your 500 cubic centimeter mark here, right? That's 500 cubic centimeter. So we want to know uh, what would be the mass that was dissolved in order to give us a concentration of 0.2. Right, so we say, okay, we've got those formulas. M is equal to C times uh, uh, M times V, okay, C times M, and let's say M, of CuSO4 times V, right? And that would give us, now we got 0.2 for concentration, 2 mole per decimeter cubed times what is the molar mass of copper sulfate. We have done this several times uh, in uh, our previous videos. And you'll see the molar mass 
is 159.5 grams per mole times our volume is 500 cubic centimeters which is right which is the same as 500 times 10 to the minus 3 decimeter right deci to, let's take that out there which is the same as uh, decimeter uh, cubed okay and we know in terms of this if we look at it that cancels out that cancels out uh, okay that cancels out that cancels out and we will be balanced with grams and that would be 15.95 grams that have been dissolved in here which would mean in here it would be 15.95 grams that was dissolved in this particular solution to give us a concentration of uh, of 0 0.200 uh, moles per liter. Okay. Now sometimes, uh, okay, we'll get to that. Uh, so you see the uh, what uh, mass had to be dissolved in 500 cubic centimeters of solution to get a 0.2 a mole per decimeter cube solution. Right. <coughs> Okay, now let's look at the next one. Here we have <coughs> calculate the concentration of a solution of 0, 0.0 copper sulfate dissolved in enough water to make up a 100 cubic centimeter solution. The next one says, what mass of copper sulfate must be dissolved to get the above concentration? Right. Now normally in a lab, when you're working in a lab, you have to use, and you're going to be using this in grade 12, where you're going to uh, use what is known as a volumetric flask. Here, You'll see uh, you have a volumetric flask, right? So let's say, to let, let's have a look at that. This is a volumetric flask. You got a volumetric flask there. Okay. And this uh, volumetric flask is a 100 milliliter volumetric flask or a 100 cubic centimeter uh, volumetric flask. You can see it's 100, uh, 100, uh, 100 cubic centimeters. So it's a 100, 100 cubic centimeter, 100 cubic centimeter. Volumetric flask, right? So that's your volumetric flask. You see what happens? Uh, the sample that's uh, actually put in here is 3.19 grams, but that's what I'm asking you in B, right? So I'm already giving you the answer there, though. Right. And here you have a wash bottle. This wash bottle, what we deal with is distal water. Right? We don't use tap water when we're preparing these concentrations because tap water has its own dissolved salts. Distal water, there's no other salts. So we use distal water when we're preparing these solutions. That's important. And that's your funnel. So what happens? You, your, your sample is put into this funnel and it goes down uh, into the volumetric flask there. Right? And you take a little water and you dissolve that uh, salt and then you take your wash bottle and you pour the water in and gradually dissolve uh, that solute so you are trying to homogenize that solution. And as you can see here, here's a meniscus. Every volumetric flask, there's a, there's a small marker here. That's the meniscus. So what happens? When you're using your wash bottle, you must pour water in here, right? So that it comes, so that the bottom of the meniscus touches that mark. And then you know you've got 
uh, 100 cubic centimeters and that's the volume of the solution. You do not fill your uh, volumetric flask with 200 uh, with 100 cubic centimeters of water and then add the sample. You have to put a sample in, dissolve it and bring up the uh, the solution to the 200 cubic uh, to the 100 cubic centimeter mark, right? So here it says calculate now the concentration of a solution uh, if 0 0.02 moles of uh, CuSO4 is dissolved in water, uh, right? So if we want to know uh, what is the concentration, we say okay, that's A. Alright, so we say A is equal to, ah, not A is equal to, right, let's look at A, A, we have, okay, A, we say C is equal to N upon V, and it says is zero point. Uh, let's just double check there. Okay, zero point zero two moles. All upon a hundred cubic centimeters of the solution. So we say times ten to the minus three uh, decimeter cubed. And that then gives us 0 0.2 moles per decimeter cube. That is a concentration. Okay, so that's the concentration. But sometimes what we do for to to um, represent it in a more shortened notation, we just say 0 0.2 molar. Where, and uh, as I've illustrated there, um, uh, a mole or mol a molarity is actually equal to mole per decimeter cubed, right? So now, if we have this and we say we want to know the mass, okay? We want to know the mass, okay? And if we want to know the mass, we say M is equal to, right, uh, equal to N, right, uh, times M, right, because we know that N is equal to mass upon uh, molar mass, which means here we're saying CuSO4, right, and we know that uh, uh, that would be uh, 0 0.02, right, times <coughs> M, which would be, uh, which would be equal to copper is 63.5, right, plus sulfur is 32, plus oxygen is 4 times 16, right? And that is equal to, this whole thing here is equal to uh, 159.5 grams. So therefore, that is equal to uh, 0 0.02 uh, moles times 159 grams per mole. <coughs> mole mole cancels out, which tells us 3.19 grams had to be dissolved in here in order to give us a, 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 a 0 0.2 mole per decimeter uh, a uh, 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 0.2 mole per decimeter cube solution. Right, and as I've shown you here, as you can see, 
that is 3.19 grams okay all right so there you have it and whenever you're going to be calculating uh, or, or or preparing uh, concentrations and if you are preparing them for analytical purposes meaning that you want accurate results you're going to do this uh, and you're going to be using a volumetric flask <coughs> right now let's take this above solution here so let's say I've got this above solution okay I have that solution and I have this solution here which I got right I got the solution and what I'm doing here now I am essentially now pouring out volume so let's say I take the above solution and I have a beaker and in this beaker I pour out a certain amount of 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 solution all right I pour out a certain amount here I pour out a certain amount of that solution as well right colors look a bit different though all right so i i pour out these solutions in respective beakers okay now the question is the above copper sulfate solution is poured into beaker one and in beaker two respectively compare what compare the concentration of the solutions in beaker one and in beaker two but i demonstrated this with fat uh, when i took out respective volumes and then it says Compare the relative number of moles of a solute in beaker 1, right, and in beaker 2. So, let's look at it qualitatively. Firstly, we know that the concentration in beaker 1 is equal to the concentration in beaker 2. Right, we know that, okay. Uh, we saw that and, and, and concentration is an intensive property, okay, Concent and we dealt with intensive properties. If you look at my previous videos, you'll see, right, concentration, right, is an intensive property. <coughs> okay. Right, now... We say, okay, if we have this, then we say, all right, C1 will be the number of solutes, uh, solute in uh, beaker 1 divided by a uh, volume of beaker 1, right? And C2, concentration of 2 is N2 upon V2, all right? But <coughs> we know that... Uh, uh, we 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 know that C1 is equal to C2, which would imply that N1 upon V1, right, is equal to N2 upon V2, right. So if uh, we look at this, and we know our volumes are different, so uh, if we have sins, right, what is uh, volume of V1? V, volume of V1 of that solution is greater than volume of V2, right? And if that is the case, then uh, how do we relate uh, the moles? And that implies that N, the moles in beaker 1, would be greater than the moles in beaker 2. Right, straightforward. Right? Right, let's look at the next one. Here we have now, it says suppose 10 grams of sugar cane, C12, H22O11 is dissolved in enough water to make a 200 uh, cubic centimeter solution, right? And it says calculate the amount of sucrose molecules added. Okay, so we could say, all right, we want to know. Uh, we got uh, 10 grams, right? 
and uh, 10 grams in enough water to make a uh, uh, 200 cubic centimeter solution. Okay. So, uh, we then say, right, we can say, uh, firstly, if we want to, we say M. We have M of C12 H22O11 and you get its molar mass and you'll see its molar mass is 342 grams per mole. Okay, that is its mass. <coughs> right, but now if we want to know how many moles is this, so we say, all right, N is equal to mass upon molar mass of C12 H22 O11, and that tells us it is equal to <coughs> Uh, 10 grams all upon 342 grams per mole and that is then 0 0.029 moles okay all right so 10 grams is actually 0 0.029 moles and what's happening uh, we know how much it is in terms of moles and we dissolving it in 200 cubic centimeters of water so we say C is equal to N upon V which is then 0 0.029 moles divided by 200 uh, cent, uh, cubic centimeters of water which I can then just say it's equal to 0.2 decimeter cubed, right? And which is then equal to comma 145 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, moles per decimeter cubed. So that is the uh, the uh, in, in enough water to make that so calculate the amount of of sucrose molecule dissolved okay so i have shown you uh the concentration all right the, the concentration uh, wasn't really asked for but nevertheless i have given you the concentration but now if we want to know the amount of molecules uh, that uh, has been dissolved uh, would go there and say okay we know N right is equal to N times NA and we know uh, the zero so it's zero point zero two nine right <coughs> moles that was dissolved I could have left the answer and just say 0 0.029 moles uh, of uh, sugarcane molecules, but let's give you the, uh, the, 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 the number. Times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules per mole. And mole, mole cancel out, so how much do I have? I have 1 point seven five times ten to the twenty two molecules right of uh, of uh, C twelve H twenty two O eleven right so there you have that Okay, let's look at the next one. Uh, 
Fine. Let's look at the next one. Okay, here now we see we have what is the concentration of sodium chloride in a solution prepared by dissolving 12.0 grams in enough water to make 250 cubic centimeters of solution. Right. So, if we look at that, we say, all right, uh, okay, M of NaCl, okay, NaCl is equal to 23 plus 35.5 and that would be 58.5 grams per mole. So we got the molar mass of the salt. Right. And what do we want? We want to <coughs> know what its concentration is. Right? So we say, okay, uh, N, we could do it like this, N, N, okay, I'm doing it, I could do it in one step, but I'm just doing it uh, uh, in more steps, so N is equal to mass over molar mass of NaCl which would be 12.0 grams all upon 58.5 grams per mole per mole per mole right and that is equal to point 205 moles okay but if you now want to know the concentration C is equal to N upon V which is equal to 0 0.205 moles all upon uh, the volume is 250 right uh, so I can say times 10 to the minus 3 decimeter cubed and uh, that is then equal to that is equal to 0 0.82 moles per decimeter cubed right or if you wanted to write it if you wanted to write it differently we could say, uh, we could even say uh, uh, 0 0.82 molar, right? Means the same thing. All right. So there we have that. Let's look at the next one. We want to know what is the concentration of sodium, of, of sodium sulfate, uh, in solution prepared by dissolving 15.5 grams in enough water to make a 350 uh, cubic centimeter solution, right? Which we can, if we want to, I could go through the whole steps or we can say, okay, concentration, right? Just to take you back, yeah, quickly right here yeah, as you can see concentration I could use this formula right okay which means now we have that okay uh, so let's instead of going through it step by step uh, let's look at that 
So if I want to know the concentration, C is equal to M upon molar mass times volume. Isn't it so? Okay. Which means this is now equal to, we say, 15.5 grams, correct? All over the molar mass of sodium sulfate. So, uh, let me just do the molar mass of sodium sulfate. Uh, so, it's all right, the molar uh, mass of sodium sulfate, that means... Uh, perhaps let's just do this, yeah. Let's do this first. Right, let's do this first. Uh, uh, we got M. M of sodium sulfate is Na2SO4, right? Which means this is actually then equal to 2 times 23 plus 32 for sulfur plus 4 times 16 for oxygen and what does that give me? That give me 142 grams per mole. Okay, so now that we've established what the molar mass is, then all we do is we got 15.5 grams, right? All divided by molar volume, which is 1. 42 grams <coughs> per mole, right? And times what's our volume? Uh, 350 cubic centimeters. So I'm just going to say 0 0.355 decimeter cubed. And we know uh, <coughs> that grams, grams cancels out per mole goes on top as mole and then we have 0 0.31 mole per decimeter cubed. Okay. Right, there you have that. <coughs> right, now let's look at the next one. Three. It says calculate the concentration of the following solutions. Right? Concentration of the following solution. Which one are we looking at? We looking at A. So A says uh, when when 10.5 grams of KCl is dissolved in 250 milliliters of solution. Right? And I told you the milliliter is uh, the same as one cubic centimeter, right? So we say, all right, uh, A, A is equal to, uh, say A, we want to know concentration, so we got C is equal to M upon M times V, right? And M of KCl is equal to 39 plus 35.5, which then gives us 74.5. 5 grams per mole. Be okay with that. Right. Which is then equal to mass is 10.5 grams all upon uh, 74.5 grams per mole times our volume is 0.25 decimeter cubed okay and that is equal to 0 
0.56 moles per decimeter cube. Right, there's the concentration of your KCL. Let's look at the next one. Here we want the concentration of calcium chloride, right? So let's work out M of CaCl2, which would be equal to 40 plus 2 times 35.5. Right, and that would give us a uh, hundred and eleven grams per mole. Now, if you want the co concentration, so we say okay, C is equal to M upon molar mass times volume. And which is then equal to, is equal to 15, okay, 15.0 grams all upon 111 grams per mole times the volume is equal to point. Point three five decimeter cubed, and what does that give us? That gives us point three nine moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, so there we have that. Let's go on to the next one. It says here. Yeah, to 25 milliliters of a 1.5 mole per decimeter cubed uh, HNO3 is diluted to 0 0.5 moles per liter. Well, okay, this is a slightly different manifestation here. Let's see, okay. Okay, let's look at this one. So we have C. All right. So what it means is we have, uh, say, um, a quantity. Let's say we have here, and we have uh, twenty-five milliliters. Okay, twenty-five milliliters, and the concentration of this is 1.5 mole per decimeter cube. That is, that is its concentration, okay? <clears throat> so let's just take this here now. That is its concentration. That is its concentration. But what happens, we then take that, we take that and we then, uh, we then put it in a, in another flask. So this is a 25 milliliter and we, uh, take that and pour it in a, in a, uh, flask that is, uh, 0.5 liters, right? So we take this, whatever moles we have here, we take that and uh, pour it in here. Right. So, let's see how much of moles we have in, uh, uh, of nitric acid do we have in, in 25 moles. So we say, okay, N is equal to, uh, right, so let's just say N, N of, of, of H N O three right is equal to one right so we can say 
the concentration so n is equal to 1.5 mole per decimeter cube right times the volume because we know n is equal to c times v right and the volume is mm, 25 times 10 to the minus 3 decimeter uh, no sorry uh, is equal to yeah decimeter cubed okay sorry decimeter cubed and what does that give us that gives us 0 0.037 right five moles of uh, moles of h n o 3 so we know how many moles we've got this but what are we doing now we're taking this moles and we're now putting it in a so and making up the solution to 5.5 uh, the volume of the solution is a half a liter of, four, of 0.5 liters. Now we want to know what is concentration then. So we say, okay, new concentration is concentration is equal to N upon V, which means I am now got 0 0.0375 moles. But this time I'm adding water and I'm diluting it and I'm bringing it to point five decimeter cubed and I want to know what's the concentration then then the concentration is point zero seven five right mole okay per decimeter cubed so as you can see the concentration is much uh, less right I have since I've increased the volume okay so there you have that it's a slightly different one but an interesting one okay so let's look at the next one it says calculate the amount of moles okay calculate the amount of moles of sucrose molecules in 15 milliliters of a 0 0,1 mole per decimeter cube solution uh, uh, right and it says calculate the number of sucrose molecules in here okay so first let's calculate the moles moles is c is equal to n upon v right which implies that n is equal to C times V. Right, and we got our concentration to be 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube times 15 milliliters, which is times 10 to the minus 3 decimeter cubed. And that gives us 0. 0 0.1 0 0.015 moles okay so we know how many moles we have in there all right which is the same as saying uh which is the same as saying 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles okay but now we want to know molecules. So we go back to what we know. We say N is equal to N times Na. And we know here we got right, 0 0.0015 moles times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules okay per mole and we know mole mole cancels out so therefore we have 9.03 times 10 to the 20 molecules 
game molecules or C twelve H twenty two O eleven. Okay, there you have that. Let's go to the next one. It says calculate the mass. It says calculate the mass of glucose needed to prepare a hundred and fifty milliliter of a zero point four four two mole per decimeter cube solution. Okay. So we say okay we want a mass. So firstly M of uh C six H twelve O six is equal to we can say six times twelve plus twelve times one plus six times sixteen. And that gives us 180 grams per mole. All right. <clears throat> now, if we look at that, we know what is molar mass. We want to know uh, what is the mass of glucose. So we say, all right, M is equal to C times V, okay, C times V. C times V times M of C six H twelve O six. Okay. And the concentration is point four four two. Right? And that is mole per decimeter cubed times volume is equal to uh, 150, which is, I'll just put it as 0.15 uh, decimeter cubed, okay? And then the molar mass is equal to uh, 180 grams per mole. Okay, and if we look at that, we know again that cancels out, that cancels out, that cancels out, and we're left with grams. And that gives us 11.93 grams of, of sucrose. <coughs> okay, All right, now let's look at the next one. Here it says calculate the mass of oxalic ox acid, okay, that's an error here, it's supposed to be oxalic acid, oxalic acid, right? Now, surely you don't know what the formula of oxalic acid, so uh, uh, oxalic acid is actually... Uh, <coughs> Let's write it here, so we got that. So oxalic acid is actually uh, H2C2O4, right? It's oxalic acid, and these are, uh, this acid, you're gonna also use it in grade 12. Uh, when you're preparing uh, concentrations and you're gonna be busy with titrations, right? So this is a formula of oxalic acid, and uh, 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 what the iron is actually an oxalate iron, right? And the oxalate iron, you know, it's uh, it's actually just two, four. it's C2O4 and it has a two negative charge. So that's your oxalate iron. Right, now we want to know M of oxalic acid, which is H2C2O4. And that gives us 2 times 1 plus 2 times 12 plus 4 times 16. And that is equal to, equal to 90 grams per mole. Okay. And now if you want to know the mass, so M is equal to C times V 
times the molar mass and the concentration we are talking of is 0.125 mole per decimeter cube. The volume we are looking at is 50, so which means it's uh, 0 0.05. Uh, decimeter cubed times 90 grams per mole and we want to know this so therefore that gives us uh, 0.563 grams okay Right, so we know how much must be dissolved in there, right? Now let's go to the next one. It says here what volume of 0 0.358 HCl should we transfer to have a sample that contains 2.55 times 10 to the minus uh, 3 decimeter, uh, uh, 2.55 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. All right, so we have that and we say, all right, we got C is equal to N upon V, which implies that N is equal to C times V, right? Or we then in, we could have did it in one step, uh, right, so... Uh, let's maybe just do that. We want the volume, right? Which implies that V is equal to N upon C. So we want to know uh, it must be 2.555 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. And the concentration we know is 0.358 mole per decimeter cube, right? And therefore, what volume will we need to transfer? We we'll need to transfer 0 0.0071 decimeter cubed. That is what we will need to transfer. Okay. <clears throat> That's what we'll need to transfer. Now let's look at a slightly different one. Here I'm looking at dilution. Right. So what happens in this situation is uh, well a common space saving a practice in chemistry is to store a solution in in its concentrated form. So we store solutions in the concentrated form and these are sometimes called stock solutions. Right. And then what happens? You dilute it as you require a different concentration. You can take the concentrated solution and dilute it and uh, get whatever concentration you need. Right. That's uh, what happens when you dilute it. So when a solution is diluted to a larger volume, the total number of moles of solute does not change. That is important, right? But the concentration of the solution is reduced. Okay, now I'm showing you what happens. So here I have, for instance, we say determine the concentration of KMnO4 solution. If 6.32 grams of KMnO4 is dissolved in 200 cubic centimeters of solution. See here. Uh, it is actually dissolved in... Can you see the volume here shows 200. So it's actually dissolved in 200 cubic centimeters of solution. Right, so what did we do? We dissolved uh, in here 
in 200, uh, uh, I mean, we, the, the, uh, the solution, the volume is uh, 0.2 liters. We dissolved it. We want to know what is its concentration, right? So if we want to know what is its concentration, and we can say, okay, if we want to know its concentration, what what is its concentration? Let's work out its concentration, okay? So we say, all right, C, C is equal to mass upon M <coughs> times V, right? Which would mean, uh, we said it's 6.32 grams, and we want to know uh, uh, its molar mass. Okay, so maybe I should just work out its molar mass of KMNO4. So perhaps let me work it out here. Uh, M or KMNO4, which means it's equal to uh, it's 39, uh, manganese is 55, and oxygen we know it's 16, right? So we know it's 16. We know it's 16, and that gives us 158 grams per mole. All right. So we know uh, that is a smaller mass. All right, now maybe let's just move this slightly this side and we say we have that and we want to know. Uh, so we want to know What is its concentration? So we say, okay, right now, <coughs> that gives us 6.32 grams, all upon the molar mass is 158 grams per mole, right? Times the volume that we saw here is equal to uh, 200 cubic centimeters, which is point two decimeter cubed and what does it give us? That gives us 0.2 mole per decimeter cubed. Right, but you see I've actually blocked this off just to show you and there we have it. We look at that and you can see it's point. 0 0.200 moles per decimeter cubed, right, which we calculated, right? I uh, just blocked it off so that we could calculate it. But now what is happening? We take this and now we're saying if the solution is diluted with water and the volume of the, sol the new volume of the solution now is 500 cubic centimeters, what would be the concentration of the new solution? So you'll see in a new solution, what I have I done here? I've got the same amount of solute in here, which means it's the same amount, right? All I've done is I've diluted it. So we have, I still have uh, here, the amount that was dissolved in here, in here is still 6.32 grams, right? It was in here, and then what I did, we just added water to this, right? We just added water to this, and now we brought it to the 500, uh, 500 uh, cubic centimeter mark, or half a liter mark. And now we want to know what is its concentration. And as you can see, it says its concentration is 0.02. 80 moles per liter, right? But let's just verify that. So we say okay, which means uh, we got here we have I've got 0 0.2 uh, moles per decimeter cube, and if we want to, uh, we know what its concentration is. 
So if we say if you want n, n is equal to C times V and we want to know the number of moles uh, moles in, in 200 cubic centimeters so we say moles in in 200 centimeter cube which we can just do here and that gives us 0.2 mole per decimeter cube times the volume is equal to per 0.2 decimeter cubed and which is equal to 0 0.04 moles right in 200 cubic centimeters so we know how much we have there okay and which is the same as having 6.32 grams right so now we say all right we have that so we want to know uh, C so C is equal to N upon V right but we know that the number of moles in here is still the same is it not so the number of moles in here is still 0 0.04 moles all we did was we adding more water and so if we're adding more water and we're then saying all right and that is equal to is equal to 0 0.04 moles okay all upon what did we do we added more water and we brought it to the half a liter mark okay decimeter cube and what does that give us which is is equal to 0 0.08 moles per decimeter cubed right and as you can see this year concurs with what we have there right so as you can see there we have it right and see you next time